for our model today we're going to do a nice uh, textured kind of spiky look that he can do a lot of different things with uh, he has extremely thick hair and very straight hair so you can see when I when I pick it up you know how hard it is to get through the comb and how much hair is actually in my fingers there just by picking one up I mean he has just got a ton a ton of hair so what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer it a little bit and we're gonna add a lot of texture so I'm gonna use my wide tooth texturizing share and go through that and uh, as I said, put a lot of texture in it. Uh, he's been growing out of fade, so you can see back here, uh, previously we were buzzing over the back and fading it. So I'm gonna use this as a guide from the back, and I'm gonna slowly blend it and angle all this hair um, so down down to that. So when he, me when he messes it up, it's kind of all even at, at, this, at this angle. Then what we're gonna do to balance the sides, now that it's getting softer, that it's, it's straighter, we're gonna taper the outline here, and we're gonna taper around the edges, and we're gonna leave all this length so it's more symmetrical instead of faded and longer on the top. So uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start out and wet the top down, and I'm gonna layer the top first and get all that texturized first, and then we're gonna start working our way around the edges. I like to break the haircuts down one step at a time. I don't like to, do, I don't like to stress myself out too much thinking about the whole picture. I mean, I know what we're gonna do by the end, but I'm just gonna start out, like I said, just gonna start out from the beginning, work on the top. Once I get that where I want it, then we'll figure out you know, how to make the rest uh, blend into that. So let's go ahead and wet it down. It's uh, freshly shampooed. And then he obviously had a part cut in there last time too, so we're gonna try to, we're gonna round that in a little bit too, so it was longer on the, on the one side. So whereas I usually do a square layer cut across the top, we're gonna, and, and, and I'm gonna start out with square layers through the center, but we're gonna slightly round the corners a little bit. I do want it longer towards the front, so I'm not gonna start cutting down here. I'm gonna direct it straight up. I'm gonna take very small sections because the hair is so thick. And then as I work my way back, what I'm doing is I'm pulling my fingers down a little bit closer and closer, so I'm gonna meet this back length that I talked about in the beginning. And then once we get to the back, our guides are gonna meet, and then I know I'm right there. So right there, our guides pretty much meet. And that's our center section, that's our center guide. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other side. And normally I would do scissor over comb, but just because his hair is so thick, I'm just gonna pick it up. Just because it's easier, easier this way. There we go, we blend to the back. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come across the other side and you're gonna see because of the previous haircut, he's gonna have a lot more hair on this side. So we're gonna keep it square on, and then we'll take one more section to the left and we'll, we'll slightly round it in. And the good thing is it's long enough where you don't, we're not gonna see where the part was, where the part was cut in while it's growing in. All right, so, and then the other thing I do too while we have a close-up shot here is, you see my, my guide here? I never, when I pick up my fingers, I never wanna have hair in my fingers past my center knuckle. Cause we always have a tendency to wanna cut past the center knuckle instead of taking another section. So when I pick the hair up, if I pick it up in a way that there's no hair past my center knuckle, then that way I can avoid cutting past my center knuckle. So just like there, it's lined up right with my center knuckle, so there's nowhere else to go to dig in and cut myself. We've all been there, we've all done it. Okay, so now, now we got a pretty good length going on top. And to check the front here, I don't want that too long. Just gonna come across the front and angle my fingers down a little bit. Cause all this is gonna spike up in the front. We're gonna push it all up. Okay. So it's starting to do what I want. Now I wanna get the texturizing shears. I'm gonna brush them off first. 
I'm going to use a wide tooth texturizing shear so we can add a lot of texture. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to do scissor over comb. The slower I move the comb, the more hair I take. The faster I move the comb, the less hair I take. If I don't move the comb at all, I'll cut length. So I don't want to cut length, but I want to take a lot of that bulk out. So I'm going to move the comb really slow. Now I'm going to turn his head towards me, and then we'll do the other side. Now we got now we got a lot of texture in it. So then the next step, what we want to do is, what we talked about before. I'm seeing a little heavy spot right in through here, so I want to do a, just a little bit of a scissor over comb right there. Just a little bit of a. So if I think if I pick up my if I pick it up here, okay, see that little point right there. That's that's a that's a little bit of a weight line. I don't want that weight line there. So um, if you think there's a weight line and you're not sure, just pick the hair up and you'll see that little point. And a point equals a weight line. So I just want to round that in a little bit. It's not there on the other side because we shaved up to the part. So um, I'm glad I'm glad we noticed that. So I'm going to take care of that with just a little bit of scissor over comb. And just slightly round it in towards the top. Not necessarily something that anybody would notice, that your customer would notice or anybody else would notice, but uh, for being a perfectionist, I want everything just right. So while I have the scissor and comb in my hand, and right here, we're going to work on that taper. So I'm just going to take the tip of the scissor, and we're just going to blend that in a little bit. Just so it looks natural. I don't want to see. I don't want to make a harsh line or anything. So that just kind of tapers it in, and then we'll do the rest with our clipper over comb around the edges. So what I want to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna because the hair is so dark, I'm gonna stick with my gray comb. I'm gonna use my adjustable clipper. I'm gonna open it up all the way so we have a softer cut. I'm gonna use the wide teeth. And then we're gonna we're gonna slowly just scoop that scoop that out and put a little bit of a taper around the edges. Then I'm gonna take the clipper at a 45 degree angle and just get it off the ears. But to match with the rest of the haircut, I don't want too hard of a line around the ears. So in other words, I don't want all this all textured and then a sharp line around the ear. It doesn't match. I want an outline that matches the haircut. So we want a nice a soft outline. And same thing with the sideburns. Since he doesn't have a strong beard, I'm just going to fade out his sideburns. I'm not going to take the trimmer and make a real straight hard line because it's not going to match and blend in with the rest rest of the haircut. So these are these are all the fine details that um, I talk to my barbers about and my, and my shops that um, just re really important. You want to make these little things that you might not necessarily think about 